Hey YouTube, thanks for all the love for the first part of this video. Sorry for the delay on my part 2. I recently switched to Adventure Resolve, trying to get a start on YouTube as I'm brand new to the whole YouTube experience. In doing so, I lost the original part 2 of my video and some extra content, so I plan on putting out better quality videos after this one that I can, and I should be a little more organized. So thank you for staying tuned, and now here's my part 2. I want to start with Arden for my A tier list. A tier is weird because everything is like so good. So it's hard to be like, this is the bad part on this, or this is a worse than this because they're all solid heroes. They just don't have as much numbers as S tier. Arden is a mage that is based around stunning or holding enemies still. And then he gets extra effects based on that. For example, his alt does a bunch of damage to a cluster of enemies. And if they're entangled, it does even more or some other control effects which is second ability we do see does entangle enemies so he can fuel his own ult. He also gets energy faster just simply from his skill. So he's going to constantly be using an ult and entangling and leveling him up is better than most other characters because he gets stronger abilities. For example, like his first one's only attack, which isn't too special, but his second one immediately after he uses an ultimate, he gets entangled again. So he constantly gets to hold enemies and sometimes holding a warrior or something like that can just completely 180 a battle because they're never able to get to you the duel of damage. He also has a great supreme skill to minimize the cooldown um, on the same enemies. So he's a great unit to get multiple copies of. The only issue is, is when you pull for him early game, there's gotta be other characters you probably wanna pull for more. And I wouldn't really go into him. If somehow Destiny gives you a bunch of copies, he's great. But the only thing that slows him down is there is only a wish list of four slots and there's just something else you'd rather pull over that I'll get into later. But um, that's that's the only downside I would say with Arden. Other than that, he's a great unit. If he like the aesthetic, go for it. Light bearers have an issue. And I feel like Cassidy is a victim of that issue where she should be in an S tier level, but she is only in an A. And that's that light bearers just always have something better than them. I feel like in one of the different factions. And due to them not having really a good tank, their DPS is kind of low. And Vala, which we'll go to later, is just kind of the DPS you would tech in over. Um, she does do a lot of damage, so I do like Cassidy. In fact, this is probably one of my favorite characters, if not favorite or second favorite mage. She can knock back enemies in a straight line and deal a bunch of damage to them. And her ult is so cool. It summons like a bunch of dolphins and it's like a big wave. I love this character and it's a shame that she's not better. Uh, her second ability is just deal a lot of damage. That's it. She's a heavy damage healer. It's great. Um, she can also bless an ally. And then when that ally hits them, she deals additional damage. So if she gives us to a tank that's pulling aggro to everything and the tank does some big swipe, they're going to take a lot of damage. And it's a really good combo. The only issue with that is there's not really a good light bear when it comes to tanks because one runs around too much and one just doesn't survive a lot. So this to me feels like a great character to invest into for the future. If light bearers get a, I hate to say third tank because the odds are low because they already have two and a lot and, and wilders only have one. This can be gutter, but the lack of tank is the issue. Now you could run this with other tanks. Yeah, but then, then you're not getting the stat bonus that you want. And if you're gonna run something else, you gotta wanna run uh, uh, Cecilia and Thorin. And until those get hit or whatever it is, there's just not going to be a situation where that's a viable reason to run it. Um, leveling up further, unfortunately, doesn't give much either. It just kind of like, I mean, it gives you more haste so she attacks faster and it's great. But if you're going to invest in some sort of DPS, Vala's just better. And then even though she can push back everyone, Vala's stun seems to just weirdly work better. So Cassidy is a great unit. If there's another tank, I can see her easily being S tier. But until then, or until she has a better slate, or until other units kind of get hit, she's got to have to say it in A tier. Aaron's great. What's the issue with Aaron though? Why is he an A and not S? Um, Aaron's ult is he summons a kind of like a big tornado and it throws everyone around and it's really good. In fact, if you need some sort of disruption, I recommend going to him. His other abilities are he does just more AoE. Um, he is able to reduce enemies haste and magic defense so he's good he debuffs he moves around he gains shield so he's just in a he's kind of like an igor he's just kind of a annoying unit that's hard to get rid of or you want to target right away 
But even with this shield and the dodge, I do feel like he dies just a bit too fast, which is an issue with him. Now, if you're to level him up, he does get some extra defense and he's able to use his ult more. So he's able to disrupt more and be a little more annoying. The only issue is as time goes on, especially in PvE, even if you disrupt their whole battlefield and, you know, put the tanks in the back or whatever, units are able to fix themselves because battles go on so long that it just doesn't work out in the long run versus just stunning something or specialized picking off harder units. So as a rogue, I rather run, there's two other rogues we'll get to eventually that's better. He's a great unit. If you like him, you like Wilders, definitely go into him. He's one of those units where I almost consider to A slash S tier, but I just feel like there's better choices, but he is wonderful. And if you like him a lot, go into it. And I feel like a lot of A tier here characters could be like that. Just because they're A doesn't mean they're not as good as S. I just feel like S has that. This is a must use where a lot of A tiers are like, you could put this in for this fight or this fight is different. Damien is the next unit I want to go into, and there's a reason for that, um, because he works so well with the two of the characters we just went over. Damien builds kind of like a decoy or substitute, as you would see in Pokemon. Um, this will distract enemies and make them distracted. He also can blind, which is another control effect, as we see that Wilders are really good when it comes to control. He also does some other healing stuff. He's able to heal allies. It doesn't make him really a great healer, but it's just kind of some extra buffs. He's more of just a tech in I need like a little extra healing or I need to distract enemy sort of unit. He doesn't have any broken DPS or heals, but that doesn't mean that he's bad. His range is also ridiculous. It's it's <laughs> it's 20, which we don't really see often. He can throw these little like airplanes to stun enemies too. So even when they're distracted, the guys who aren't distracted are being stunned. Um, his level up, I don't really like personally because I feel like the attack is kind of eh. His last one I like the most because it does increase the amount of blind. The reason I want to show this unit is because it works really, really, really well with Aaron and Arden that we just went over. And I'm going to show you a team build that I personally like. Now you can move around this position a little bit. This isn't a concrete position or you could switch if you want another healer out for something else or whatever. You could put Rosebell on the that. What I'm trying to show is these three units work really well together. And remember that Aaron has the ability to throw units around and it is a control effect mixed with Arden's ability to also mobilize, but his ult does more damage to controlled enemies. So this will fuel Arden's ult as well as Damien's blind that he gets from his skills will also fuel his skills. So these two units make a really good Arden. Now, well, the reason why this is an A tier, not an S tier team is because just simply from the fact of running this, you're kind of stuck on when I'll do run. He's a okay healer, but I need another healer. Something else you could do is like you could run a uh, Cecilia and a Thorin here, but the issue is you need that healing. Something you could do too is target an artifact. It just, uh, again, at the end of the day, it always depends on the battle, but this trio is a pretty powerful thing, especially early game. If you're just starting off, these units are pretty easy to get. And then you get him from like the starting chest when you get to pick uh, one of the four characters. So if you're having struggling issues, I recommend using this team. Now it's time to go over Corrin. Corrin is one of those characters where I would have put him in B with Valen, but due to how good he is when it comes to fighting bosses, he is an A tier. So his ult is he knocks towards enemy and mobilizes them. Now against bosses, this doesn't do too much, but it's the chain of other things he gets. His other skill is he can jump and grant a shield to allies he lands next to and deal damage. So if my Thorin is attacking one of the Dream Realm bosses, He's got to jump next to him and give my tank extra shield. And he's guaranteed the critical strike when he's only one target away or one tile. So his ult is going to get a crit. So a crit ult is very powerful next to the fact that like he just has good other abilities he gets into. My favorite is his last one, though, that reduces one tile away damage. So he's able to just keep swinging at those dream Realm bosses longer and longer because they're not killing him as fast. So Korn is, I would say, B when it comes to more ad control or more PvE things that are outside of it. But when it comes to bosses, it purely makes him an A, and I always recommend using a Korn. So invest in him. I still think I would rather go into, I don't know, Odin or like other things when it comes to investing. But I would have Korn as my wish list unit just because he is an A tier and it's easy to pull him, and why not? Tamizia is unfortunate it is the main tank when it comes to our light bearers 
And the issue I have with that is they focus too much on making here this sort of distraction attack tank versus just tank tank. And it just doesn't work because like Lucius is good at being a tank tank, but he is still B tier. And, and as time goes on, he just gets worse and worse. This is supposed to be the go to late game tank. And she does a great job at doing what she's supposed to do. But this should have definitely been a warrior more than a tank. Um, she charges around the battlefield and knocks things out of the way, deals damage, uh, which is fun and it's good. And, 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 and in a way it is tanky because you're stopping your units from being hit in a different kind of way. But my issue is she takes too much damage and she does have an ability that's supposed to reduce damage that she takes as well. But it's just not enough because when she's running in there and attacking, she's getting hit probably by four out of five enemies because one's going to be a healer. And it doesn't work because normally a tank can easily grab most people's aggro, but there's always one unit that gets away. And if your back row is getting attacked, it's like not the end of the world. But she just dies too fast. She doesn't have any way to gain shield. The damage reduction is good, but it's not enough. Even when you level her up, um, she does get like immunity control so she can keep running and it's harder to hit. I, I get why it's good. Like I, I definitely understand what she's supposed to be, but until you level her up all the way, and get the extra like debuffs you can put on and her control immunity she's just an a tier if you max her all the way i would say i consider her a lower s but i'm more of a uh, a guppy or a dolphin player where like i'll spend some money on this game but i'm not going to spend more than you know 20 bucks a month or give or take I, i'm not whaling so for whales it's a great character but in general i just feel like it's not worth the investment and by the time you even get her all the way up, there'll probably just be another tank as well as just run another tank, right? Like you could just run Thorin or whatever. I don't see a good reason for her. So that's my only issue with this unit. And she's so cool looking too. And that's the unfortunate part. So not terrible to use, but unless you get her all the way up, don't expect her to be that great. Carolina is amazing. If you're going for a pure Graveborn team, this unit is great. Graveborns have an issue of not having a healer. Now, I know they can steal health and they have life drain and they can drain and give it away and Nero is able to revive and all that, but none of that's good enough of just having a healer. In fact, in AOK Arena, I think they only ever had one healer and they got away later. Um, she's able to freeze enemies with her ult, so it just kind of like gives an initial slowdown uh, and kind of give frostbite out. So she's a good DPS and field controller. Now, in a weird way, you could kind of like consider this in a way healing because she is freezing enemies. So you're not taking damage. I know that's like a control thing, but when it comes to Greatborns, in my idea, <laughs> this is sort of healing because you don't have anything else, right? You have nothing else to work with. Uh, she's also able to surround herself in snow and then autom automatically attacks characters with control. So this goes into her ult. It also gives her sort of a um, shield kind of in a way. There's not too much of this character. She's not anything crazy or anything like super to dive into. Even our other skills just kind of give her like extra status effects uh, not status effects but um like defense attack and all that her well, last one's really good though because when she flicks snow uh frostbite while dealing damage with snowballs that means that she doesn't have to use her alt for it anymore she can use her snowball throwing effect to give it so she's giving frostbite out to just everything this is a great unit if you're going for a pure Greyborn because you're like i'm gonna use Greyborn, i'm gonna go for it the only reason it's a tier not s tier if i had to give a reasoning why is she is a great born at the same time right great borns feel amazing as a tekken faction to me but great borns in my mind don't have enough to be a full-on faction just because they lack healing and then if you end up running like four great borns and like i don't know a random healer like it could work but great borns definitely feel like a three two faction to me or even two three where you only want to run thorn and sissia and three of another one like a wilders or something if they get a healer or they get some upgraded life steal or something that makes these units survive or gain energy faster than having to run like a Rowan, I see this character going up. But for now, I have to give it an A just simply because Great Borns are in a weird spot. Brutus. Brutus, an A tier. It's going to seem crazy to some people, but I don't see him as an S tier. I, I get everything he has is good on paper, but just while using him, I, I don't see it. Um, his ult is just a spin the win and that's also my issue is like it does a lot of damage don't get me wrong but it needs to do more it needs to lower more defense it needs to inflict some sort of thing it needs to heal him it needs to do something the spin the win to me just doesn't feel enough now there's characters in c and b tier i put because their alts are too simple 
but just being too simple isn't enough for him. He's still A tier just because his other stats are great. He's, he's a good unit. Don't get me wrong. It just doesn't feel less. He's able to taunt and reduce physical defense. So if he taunts, reduces it, and then spins, it's great. It, it's a good combo. Now, the reason you like this character is Brutus is immune to the first fatal blow. That's great. I think it's about five seconds somebody times or five point something seconds. Now, my issue is, is people are like, oh, well, he's immune. So he's five seconds of free, just damage, whatever like that. I just feel like there's characters that you could run that just don't die, right? Like there's just characters that don't need this skill simply because they can just take hits more or they have a way to heal or shield themselves. So yes, he does a lot of damage and he can't die. And it's like, oh, it's kind of like, um, the, I, I can't think of his name, the Viking guy in League of Legends. It's like, oh, a trend mirror. That's what it is. It, it's kind of like one of those put into this game. It's just why have the ability to not die when there's just units that can just literally just not die, right? Like, and have other skills. Um, the more you upgrade him, he gets like life drain, so he gets better. The issue is, is this is one of those characters that isn't that good at the start, unless you start whaling, especially his last one. Like, it's so important to get him Supreme Plus because you can make his ability to not die last longer, but it's Supreme Plus, right? Like, if I'm gonna whale, I feel like there's other characters to whale for. He's just kind of a weird thing. Um, honestly, even getting him to Mythic just for this skill does help him a lot. But I just feel like if you're going to invest in units, there's other units. Now, Maulers, if he's on your wish list and you happen to pull him, good for you. If, you, if you're a Mauler main, I have some friends who love Maulers. That's all that they, they don't want to play anything else. Like I have friends who love Gary Borns. I, everyone has their thing. If you love him, go for him. Uh, but I wouldn't invest unless you are going just some sort of pure Mauler build. Leica is going to be an A tier for general use, but I'm going to call this an S tier character. I know that sounds crazy to any here tier, but I'm going to call this an S tier character if you use it in a certain build, and I will show that in a second. Um, Leica's ability is really nice. She shoots his giant arrow laser kind of deal forward, and it increases all the damage that normal units use. And it's not just hers, it's anything, which is, goes into the build I'll show you. She also has the ability to just increase allies' special attack and grants the energy, which is just, it's just good. It's like our mini Rowan in a way. Um, she also is able to reduce physical defense. So she can increase, she buffs, she debuffs, she does damage. It has everything that a good unit can do. Her upgraded skills are all great too. The meteors are kind of fun. You can summon meteors to assist in battle. And her last skill is she debuffs more. So she's just, she, she debuffs better than some debuffers. She is able to give a buff. She does good damage. She's a ranged unit, so she won't die as much. Now, why is this A tier and not S in general? It works for certain things, but not others, right? Like, you can't just throw this in anywhere. There's a lot of characters that have really slow normal attacks, or they're not based on that. They're based more on alts, or they have a damage over time. She's not just plug this character in and then press go, bash your head against the wall and win. S tier certain builds, A tier, and I'm gonna show you guys why I think she's S tier in this build I have. This is kind of the team I'm using right now when it comes to PVE. Uh, what I, I don't wanna go into the CC and Floribel and all that stuff later. What I'm gonna go to now is her effect. So what she does is she shoots that arrows forward and leaves that path. Now, not only are these four characters getting normals, CC's minion only does normal attacks and she summons two little flower children that do normal attacks. So that's three extra normal attack units. So this skill just gains so much traction from that. So this is a really good combo I'd recommend. You could also tag Thor now for the grandma if you have her. Uh, sometimes I debate on that, but um, because it, it depends really on the stage. But the fact is that her ult isn't just feeling the current board. It's almost like running two alts just because all the little minions now also get that buff. Um, so that's a really good combo I'd recommend. And that's why I say she is an S tier character when it comes to what team you want to go into a tier outside of that a tier i know with scarlita now i get it scarlita oh look, you have all these things blah blah blah, blah. I'm, I'm basing this more on your general player not your whale right if i was just a whale i could be like here 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 go uh this character is just not worth investing in now she's great she's a warrior she flies around with her skills and kind of just like does a bunch of AOEs and, and and just kind of like a normal warrior. She's able to give shields. She does a little bit of everything. She gets really good later on with her stuff, but these characters are so hard to pull with the Celestial units that she's not worth investing in, right? Rainer is just an, is honestly the only god that's worth it. And at one copy, she just falls off too quick where you'd rather run another warrior of a faction that kind of has more of a combo. Now, 
if for some reason you get this super early game sure but uh she's just not really worth going into i am disappointed um i i really feel like this is just more of a unit that was targeted towards whales just because she really gets good later on but i wouldn't even recommend getting one if you get it from the free 7 14 day or whatever use her but i would avoid pulling for this character unfortunately dio is in the same boat where he is a marksman and if i'm going to use a marksman i'm already going to use something like sasia or something else um he's just a massive dps like he he's great don't get me wrong he penetrates things he's able like you can read his stuff right here he soars into the air so he's harder to be hit he does a lot of knockback he's just a dps the only issue is is a lot of the the like the gods and the, and the devils and all that are just kind of like i do a lot of this thing but they're not able to combo with other characters not saying this character is bad again get an early game use it where he really shines his late game where he gets extra um effects off and he gets extra timing like this one it increases the duration of his feast which is his buff he gives everyone right that's supreme plus on a thing that's already so expensive even to pull one copy of it's just another whale bait avoid going into this unit uh it, it's not worth it go in the rain or of anything now the a tier is done we're gonna move on so what i have is an a slash s tier the reason these aren't all in s tier or one a tier is because they just kind of functioned a little better but s tier to me are the units that no matter what you'll go you're going to use so this just felt like an appropriate list for some of these because there's certain scenarios where some of these characters can just get you know bashed around and they're not as good but most of the times they're going to be a solid unit going into fights the king of situation igor igor is really annoying he hits everything as his all that's it and it's like oh it doesn't do that much no it does a lot of damage it's really annoying but what makes him annoying is he puts these tombstones around the map and with these tombstones he's able to avoid being killed so if he's killed he jumps to a tombstone with his third skill and he recovers health when this is super annoying is when he jumps to a new tombstone and then gets healed by a healer it's essentially like having a brand new start igor so that character just keeps going and going and going he also can jump to other tombstones and deal damage to things but the it's just the fact that he brings draws out and i hate the draw mechanic in this game i think it should be whoever has the most amount of character wins a draw but that's not what i'm getting at he can either draw for you if you're in the pvp or he can survive long enough to just pick off units igor to me is great the only issue is some control effects get to him he has good upgrades where he can get like life drain and um he gets extra tomb so immediately like i don't know that's not really gonna happen but if he were to die instantly he would get another tomb to go to it's more of just he has an extra thing to do to but control effects really get to him so that's kind of something that's annoying he jumps around a lot and he is so that's why i wouldn't consider him an s always but a lot of the times you'll want to play a man if you're just trying to annoy your opponent and get the win that way i have a lot of argument when it comes to granny i personally think at the very end super late of the game she is the best tank now thorn is our s tier because you know everyone says he's the best and, and, I, and I can't prove this yet i have to get towards there my thing with thoron is he brings himself back to life and that's pretty good and all that but she just doesn't die right she is immune to control effects she has her own control effect which drains energy and health the energy to me is is all enough to be broken because it prevents alts from being used as fast as they are so she has a healing energy she immobilizes her other skills is if she takes a bunch of damage, she can like reduce haste. So she starts taking less and less damage. So if they start getting to her quick, she has an option to get rid of that. She has the ability to heal her health on top of a heal on her health. Um, all of her upgrades are insane. They just keep enabling her to survive longer. In fact, I, I almost want to <laughs> re-record this and put her in S just the more I think about it. But the only reason she, to me, is an AS is because damage-wise, Thoron does more. But late game i would not be surprised if she takes best tank unless a new tank unit was to come out um and power creep it which is possible a lot of times power creep units are what's on the rate up gotchas but really good if you're a big wilder fan i would honestly go her over thoron thoron is probably just an s tier in my mind because he has a really good debuff he puts on enemies but if you want survivability like if you're having trouble with your units in the back row surviving granny to me is the go-to tank for that Sylvana is great. Sylvana is a self-destruct 
button, right? She's got to go in there. She's not going to live long enough. She'll probably be the first unit to down always, but she is going to take out whatever she's looking at. Her whole point is I'm going to put this unit in to get rid of your unit. So if they have a healer you can target and take down, it's worth it, right? Her sacrifice is going to take out something that's going to be more of a problem. Uh, she instantly teleports to the other side with her first strike. So she kind of just is dash and goes. Everything kind of turns around and targets her, but she's so fast with her DPS that she can usually take down one unit before she goes. Her ult, you don't really see much just because she's not around much, right? Um, it's just a big damage dealer. She attacks things with the most energy and reduces their damage. So just kind of a little more like disruption. And then she does like world attacks. Uh, everything kind of increases her crit, some survivability. Nothing really crazy because she doesn't need to be crazy. Her whole thing is I'm going to look at that thing and it's not going to exist. And I'm going to show you what I mean. Now, we're just going to use the current stage I'm on, for example, because it makes it easy. So I'm going to pick Sylvana, right? So she targets whatever's there. So let's say that this healer was a thing, right? This stuns, but let's just say this is a healer. I can bring her there and target this. Or if this was a healer, you could just bring it here or here. You can choose what you want. In fact, if units are stacked up, you, you can decide which one. If I put her here or there, but if this unit was right here, I could put it all the way back here and it would target straight ahead. The reason I like this more than Vala is Vala comes out here and Vala goes, okay, I'm targeting this unit. Now, sometimes you can like this example, you can bring her around the target, but you're always going to get a left or a right, right? There's not much. Sylvana has the ability to just choose what I want. So if they had a weird build and their healer was right here in the front row for some reason, I could choose to target that. And that's why I think Sylvana is an SA, just because she dies so fast that sometimes she's not useful. But if they have a weird formation or a healer, like say there's a, uh, a map where there's a brick wall right here, you can put her here and she gets past it where Vala could have a hard time. Oh, there's a brick wall here. Vala can't target those where Sylvana can automatically go. Yeah, that's not going to exist. That's no longer going to be a problem. Shakir, Shikra, whatever you want to call it, is good, right? Like, there's not much to him. He is such a easy to understand unit. All of his attacks are one sentence, super simple. What he does is he turns into this giant kind of like werewolf form. See right here, and he'll jump into the horde of enemies, and he just doesn't die. I mean, he is just a disruption. He's like an Igor, like you know, Igor jumps around, does that I talked about. He is a different type of that. He doesn't get to revive if he does die. But he does a bunch of AOEs. He gets a bunch of buffs. Um, everything about him is great. He's just so simple to use. There's never a bad moment where you can't just throw him in. Now, the only reason he is an AS tier and not S tier is because he is very much a mauler unit. He works on that mauler 22% buff if you have a full team or 18. Just because of his, I'm going to jump in there and take everything. Everything's going to be targeting. He's going to go fast. He needs whatever buffs he can in order to help him survive from what his special is. Now, investing gear brings him a lot higher, like most units. I mean, not every unit, but he's kind of good as a base. Honestly, early game, he, I remember using him. He helped carry. So he's a good unit to use. Um, I can't remember. If you're a mauler player, use it. There's no reason to not use this if you're maining maulers, especially because we're having a new update soon with two new maulers. He's only going to get better worth all of your investment. I love Florbell. Florbell is the first character that I'm getting even past Mythic almost to Supreme. She's great, right? So she summons little like seed kids out and they attack. So there's one that's a spear. She starts at the beginning and then she can summon an arrow unit um, for her ult. Her ult, she summons a hammer seedling to smash the ground and knock everything over and do AOE. I wish the knock was a little longer, which is why I can't just say S tier throw and everything because the ult could be a little better, um, but she works good for a certain type of build. She increases haste and life drain because she what she does is she takes a little seedling child and she makes it huge and uh, I don't know, injects with the hormones or whatever, <laughs> and they end up doing a lot of extra damage. So she's just a buffer. The weird thing is she's a warrior. That, that's what I can't get over. Um, she's able to summon stuff into battle so she can summon the archer. And then if she uses it again, she does like the big archer barrage. All of her upgrades are pretty good increase. But the reason Florbell is OK is you have to invest heavy into her because what makes her good isn't her supreme. Though, I mean, it is good. It's just not needed her level four ability. She grants a shield to allied summoned units. 
So all of her flower kids now have her little warrior spear guy has her thing. And the reason I like this and what I showed my current build early in the video is this gives Cecilia a shield on her unit that drains health. The downside of that unit is it drains health over time to keep it from being broken. Well, now they have a shield they have to kill through. So she has another tank for longer. Your C killed him. And if you wanted to, you could run Damien. And Damien's chariot now has a shield. And that chariot shield lets you blind enemies longer. So Florbell, great S slash A. Only reason she's not an S is because she's very picky and ability when a runner for. She's not just a generic overall unit that you can throw in anywhere. With all that being said, we're headed into the S tier. Now, this is the best of the best no doubt right last year um i picked these units mainly because they're just generically always feel like a good unit there's never any downside if there's certain units are like oh well this boss says that units that stand still get blah 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 they can either like buff them way their way out of it they can jump around there's or it's worth just taking a lot like no matter what the downside is at the level these units just always feel good to use start us off we're gonna go over Odie. Odie, to me, is the best damage dealer for bosses in the game. Uh, his ult is he shoots a snake at them, and it deals continuous damage to an enemy. Essentially poison, in other words. His other skill is when he hits a poison enemy, it increases the damage. So the damage will just keep stacking on top of each other, making him stronger and stronger. So single target DPS, he, to me, personally, is the strongest. He also has another one that just lets him deal more damage. He just constantly is dealing out single target damage. And by increasing his skills, he has higher attack speed as well as higher damage on poisoned enemies. So it just feeds more into the single. Now his fourth skill immediately destroys poisoned enemies when their health is too low. This is nice because it saves you time. And as soon as that enemy is done, Odie is able to target another enemy, get the poison on and then rinse and repeat till you win. If you were to ask who the best healer in the game was, I would say Smokey. Now, the reason other healers are used is more of a faction bonus or what you're looking for, or example, Rowan gets energy, stuff like that. Smokey has two things. His ult constantly heals and his smoke cloud that he puts on the field, but his other skill also just heals. So he heals with the aroma and he heals from the ult. So it's a constant healing. Now, that's not all though. He does give everybody an attack, which is why smoky from his attack increase energy decrease and constant healing is the best healer when it comes to bosses you'll see in the dream or whenever you always use smoky he heals so much he's able to heal over boss damage by the time they hit you with example the sky cops laser you can heal back and the attack lets you get to the higher and higher numbers only to be better every time you get him he's definitely one of those characters that increases every single level he gets more attack bonus uh he improves his aroma so it deals more damage to enemies he also has a really good supreme which it recovers more hp so sometimes like of a sky cops with to take your guys down to 25 percent health and you're the swing up there and he's healing if he can't get to that you know 75 mark or whatever before another laser comes they'll get wiped out having him supreme allows you to heal all the way back up to 100 before you get hit again now, that is hard to get unless you're a whale, but even without it, Smokey is the best healer and the healer you want to be using for your boss battles. Vala is used for the same kind of reason that we see OD being used. She's a really, really heavy single target DPS unit, which is why for bosses, a lot of times you'll see her on teams. Um, she does move around, which is nice. There's a certain boss in the Dream Realm that if you're standing still, she has the ability to hop around so it gets out of that debuff and that damage you take from it. So she's able to shoot with like pretty much a giant laser gun and it stuns an enemy or she goes into a sword mode where she dashes forward and hits it. Uh, just more single target DPS. I would say Odie's a little better simply because he just does that tick damage that's a little better. But she is a good backup if your Odie's not big enough. But because Odie's at A tier most of the time it is, you could also run both. She does put a star above their head, which is kind of like a bounty, and she'll attack that unit as well as we see um, she reduces haste as one of her other things. So she slows down. She's kind of one of those good and in and outs. Like I said earlier, she is like a Silvana, um, except she lives longer because she's a lot of times in the back row with her gun. She can only target the back left to right, like we said too. Um, so I still personally like Silvana, but it's a really good unit. The only thing I would say is Vala was a raid up. So a lot of people don't have her. You can now put her on your wish list, but by now you probably have other things higher. 
but if you did invest in if you're thinking about it she's worth getting and she's honestly a good thing that light bearers need um the good thing about her is she does increase like attack and she does higher damage which is like really good but it's not really needed percentage wise i don't know the exact numbers i i've, I've done them before and I'll, i might i might put out the numbers later if i can remember um the exact percentage of damage she does from her supreme and up isn't really worth investing into her i would pull maybe up to legendary just to get like some extra damage but besides that i would invest she's the point i'm trying to make is she's a really good one copy character so i definitely get into vala and that's why it's an s tier unit i feel like cecia doesn't even need an introduction everybody knows why she's good she's 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 just the game right she summons a free tank to the back row which will pull aggro from her uh, the only downside is the tank does lose damage or uh, health over time, which is why Floorbell is really good. They give it the shield to keep it on the field longer, but a great ult. Also, in that ult, she's able to hold enemies in position, so she has a control effect with it. Um, she has higher attack speed. She can deal enormous damage with fewer normal attacks. She's just a heavy hitting unit that summons a tank. If any unit was to get hit, and if they do any kind of nerfs, Cecia is the first unit I can see getting hit. Upgrading her is okay. She gets higher attack speed, nothing crazy. This one is really good. She entangles enemy and absorbs stats from that target. So if something has a buff or something, she now gets that buff onto her and it holds an enemy still. And her uh, extreme skill or her supreme, uh, the number of normal attacks you need is higher. So it's just a higher DPS. So she's definitely worth maxing. I would have her on your wish list. Any chance you get to pull a copy of a character and you get the pick, pick Cecia. I feel like Cecia until they hit, if they do a hit, is going to just be, in my opinion, top three character. My personal favorite character in the game, Rowan. Rowan is just great. Uh, the only downside I would say with Rowan is he isn't as good as a healer as we get with Smokey or for what we have for Wilders we'll go into. Um, but he's still a very solid healer. He throws potions. I kind of wish Light Bears had another, Light Bringers had another um, healer that wasn't him because Faye is kind of weak. Like, you don't want to use Faye. Uh, so he's kind of, you want to run a pure Light Bearer team. He's kind of what you got. You can also tech into some other things. He gives energy to everything, which is great because the alts of all your guys just pop, especially if you have Cecilia on the team with him. You immediately get a second tank, which can pull aggro and let your team kind of surround and do its thing. She's also really good against uh, with Vala because with Vala, she instantly gets her alt, which lets you stun and kind of uh, spot removal a certain target on the board. So great unit, great alt. Uh, he heals. We sort of went over that one. He can call in his duck to either attack or absorb energy. The absorb energy, I think, is honestly probably the best mechanic in this game. Alts are just carry you forward. There's some characters that can, like Igor doesn't have to ult, he's still pretty good. But stopping alts is a difference between if you win or lose a battle. So that's the only thing I will say about him that is a better healer than others. Good news is he is kind of a one copy character. His other skills like give you some extra haste, uh, heals a little bit more, gives you another potion. But his last skill is pretty good. It gets you even more potions. So as you level him up, he does become a main healer. But I do think he is more of a one copy character because if you're going to invest in a healer, why not go towards Smokey or a Wilder? But Rowan, solid unit, can't go wrong with him. Spend the dollar and unlock him. <laughs> Thorn. Thorn is great. I love everything about Thorn. He is a solid tank. So he's a tank. His ult is the amount of damage he takes in. He deals back in a big swipe, and honestly, it targets most of the field. Sometimes it'll miss a unit or two if they're on the sides, but it's a huge range. Uh, his other skills is that he gets to drain HP, so it's pretty good. Let's live a little longer. And then when he dies, once a battle, he gets to revive himself. The issue I have with this is if he's in his ult and he dies, he doesn't get the ult back. He gets revived, but it's just kind of a wasted ult. Or if you were to use another tank's ult, you get to keep its effects. Um, that's the only reason why everybody says Thorin's the best, and I agree, but I honestly think the grandma late game will be better simply because you can't afford to be whiffing an ult. Um, his death is nice, but sometimes when he dies and he's coming back, that amount of time difference, they'll start targeting your back row, and if your back row gets targeted late game, you're done. Uh, I think personally now he's the best. He also puts a debuff on enemies, which is really good for boss battles, but you have a good choice either him or the granny either or is a solid unit i feel like most of the game you can use him and granny you can invest into later but use him for the beginning his other skills are pretty good he just gets more energy recovery and energy recovery is nice because he gets to use his alt faster um which is good because right because like if he dies he loses it but if he gets it off before he dies and it's solid um this skill is kind of weird he takes some damage for an ally i 
don't know how I feel about this attack or this ability. The only reason I don't like it is because he already has an issue with dying fast sometimes when you're trying to push for higher level content that's higher than you. So taking the extra damage sometimes is actually worse where I'd rather have my Valor or whatever it is die and have him live longer. So this is kind of a, a double-edged sword where it might hurt you in the long run. Uh, his Supreme skill is pretty good. It drains HP from an enemy uh, when he uses his ultimate. It's pretty good. It lets him use his ultimate. It fixes the issue of him dying in his ultimate and coming back. But the only sad part is you don't have a choice with the skill. You have to use it. So we have yet to see really super late game how he is. He's really good against bosses. He's a go-to. So you're either going to use him or grandma. Worth the investment. Can't go wrong. If you were to ask me who the strongest healer in the game is, I would say Hewen. Smokey has the most amount of heals with his auras. But if you want burst healing, Hewen is better. That's also the issue with her, though, is sometimes you have to wait till you get to her ult. She does have a skill that heals an ally for a small amount of HP. So if you have a good enough tank absorbing that damage, then she's great and it fixes the issue. And it's essentially like a, a not as good smoky. But because it is burst, again, burst is better in some scenarios. So it just depends um, what your team really is. Right now, I'm playing a Wilder slash Greyborn team, so I'd rather use her where Smokey's better in battle. She also has another skill that heals allies again and removes debuffs. Uh, simply because of the debuff removal and how important debuffs become in the later stages, I like her over Smokey for PvE. Uh, Smokey would be more of a boss battle. So I would say she is the best healer. That's why you should pull for her. She only gets better too. Um, this one's kind of weird because her increase attack doesn't really make sense because like the attack isn't what she needs like it's kind of a weird skill um i do believe the attack does affect healing though a lot of the times so it could improve healing she's also immune to control effects spokey doesn't have this neither does rowan so if they try to stun your healer it doesn't work this is insane because that split second of being stunned your allies could all die before she gets her heal off she also uh, gets reduced damage received by allies so just everything about her is great I would say if you're trying to find a healer you want to carry all the way to max level to the end of the game so far, this is a healer you should go for. Um, haste, debuffs, everything, you can't go wrong. I got pretty lucky too and I pulled a lot of her, so I'm happy about that one. The last thing I want to go into is Raynor. Um, I have a lot to say about Raynor. Raynor is amazing, right? Like everything about him is good. He's honestly the only Celestial you should be pulling, unless you just want a copy of every character, then I get it, like do it. The only issue I have with Raynor is he is not good until you unlock his Mythic Plus skills. Uh, just because it kind of gives him the buffs you need and all this other thing. So Raynor, what he does is his ult is he and something he targets teleports to like kind of another dimension and then they fight each other for like, I think it's 10 seconds and then they come back. Um, super good. Let's you just delete a unit off. Uh, unit deletion is super good when it comes to late game because there's a lot of problem units. Raynor's targeting is weird because it's kind of a mirror. So your battlefield's mirrored from how yours is. Uh, skip a space. So sometimes you can't really get a target you want to. This skill I really like. So he switches your ally with your opponents. The only thing is Raynor to me feels solid of your running double tank. So something I was thinking of is you use Thorn and the Granny and Raynor. You could teleport Thorn over there just to take the attacks. And then your allies get healed based on that damage. So Thorn's going to die, but then he comes back with his skill. That's his whole thing. So that's a solid team. I feel like there's still a lot of discovery. Uh, the only issue I have with Raynor is he has to be next to the unit he teleports. So if I were to teleport my unit array late game, like if I grab something, that unit can usually just kill Raynor. Raynor is 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 very glass cannony. I know some people are like, oh, he's pretty beefy and you get the heals, blah, blah, blah. But he just dies really quick. And I think once you get a Mythic Plus, it gets better because then you get the um, attack, right? So you're doing more attacks, you're healing more, and you lower the enemy's attack. The reason that's good is because of that enemy side of running next to Raynor. He's got to die really quick, but at least now he won't die as fast. So you'll be able to do your combo that you're doing and hopefully he gets his off by then. His other skill is he just does uh, damage and knocks in the air. Any kind of knockback is always good. Um, and then leveling up is good. But the thing is, is because he is a celestial, that's just kind of the word I use for the gods and the, the demons or whatever. Um, he has issues simply because unless you're wailing, he doesn't become good. Where I feel like You'll just have legendaries and mythics of other characters by the time you get Raynor. So Raynor's in a weird spot where in the long run he's going to be great. But for most of my free-to-play players, which I kind of make content for, or my guppies and dolphins, 
Uh, I recommend just like keep pulling on him, but I wouldn't really use him until he's Mythic Plus. And that's kind of it for my part two of everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I forgot somebody because I know myself, right? <laughs> but um, if I did, sorry about that. Sorry it took so long for this video too. Uh, again, I lost all my content. I'm doing it. This video is uh, not necessarily like a bit more rushed, but I just wanted to get it out because people were asking for it. In the future, I have better content that's laid out. Um, I don't really use scripts. I kind of just read off of stream and uh, just kind of go with the flow on it. So like, I'm not going to be like, oh, well, the five point whatever percentage of this unit is better than this. I'm just giving you like a uh, personal conversational version of what I want my list to be. And um, I appreciate everyone being here. I'm getting uh, messages. I'm, my Discord's filling up. I, I like talking to all these new people in my Discord. I appreciate all the support, guys. It means everything to me. Um, I will see you guys later, and I will keep doing my best to bring you content to help you out in the easiest way possible. Bye.